Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Two Men No Hope. We're on episode 10, which I didn't think we were going to get to, but fucking hell am I happy we did. You know what yeah, I mean? Uh, we got a fucking belter of an episode today. We've got two listeners that uh, emailed in and we've got a special new segment at the end of the show as well. So, you know, stick it out and hopefully you enjoy what we've got in store for at the end. But as always, I'm Dan and with me is Jamie. Hi guys. And... Uh, Let's get the episode started. How have you been this week, man? I've been all right. Uh, as I said, like last week, it was like the week of bereavement this week, wasn't it? So, I uh, yeah, I was messaging you. The other, I didn't realise that you were you were at another funeral. <laughs> 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 but yeah, the week went as well as it could. I got the time off work, which is, makes life a lot easier. Um, you got to work it back though, right? Yeah, which. I think like going from Wednesday into Thursday, I had the funeral on Thursday. I was on late shift, so I finished at 10, started again at 6 in the morning, and then went straight to the funeral from work at half 11, and went, Fuck that. and then like, obviously you drank and stuff like that, and then I was back in at 11 the next day, it was like kind of a hectic couple of days, but got there. Yeah, I bet it was, man, but I'll be snoring in the back they're doing the sermon and you just hear me I, <laughs> like really fucking loud when I got to the wake I got a, I got a pint yeah and I went out for a smoke with my uncle I just said to him I don't know how I'm standing right now <laughs> I'm just <laughs> <laughs> I was like I'm hoping this beer just gives me like a little bit of a a boost which it did weirdly enough because normally beer makes people go to sleep isn't it? But yeah it does it knocks me out like hell it actually woke me up for a little while. I was all right. I, I went to bed early, though. I did go to bed at, like, 9 o'clock, so it wasn't a usual mad one for Jamie. Early. Fucking hell. I go to bed at 9 o'clock. Makes me feel really old. <laughs> oh, man, my week's been boring as anything. I didn't really do anything. But funny enough, I was in... I was having one of my uh, ADHD paralysis days yesterday, so I was in, like, in and out of bed all day. Yeah. I still got my working. So I didn't go food shopping, so I went to Greg's on my break today. And um, there's a sign up that said, due to the um, whatever's going on in the Ukraine, yeah, we're not going to be using rapeseed oil. We're going to be using sunflower oil. And I said, to, I thought to myself, what the fuck has that got to do with Ukraine? Well, they grow rapeseed, don't they? Yeah, but so do we. It smells like cat piss. Yeah, but I think they're like the biggest distributor in the world or something. So what do we do with ours? Nothing. Put it we probably, we probably sell it to Ukraine. <laughs> It does in my head, you know, like everything they're blaming on the fucking Ukraine. Like, you're telling me that our entire country runs from Russia and Ukraine? Well, what what I found out when I was in Crete, because obviously all you got when you're abroad is CNN. So I was watching a lot of CNN, yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, I found out that all the grain for Egypt and them type of countries come from bloody Ukraine. And it's... Ismo. And it's sitting in the... Uh, ports can't leave because russia's blockading everyone all the boats from leaving yeah so that's probably the same problem with the uh, rape seed isn't it there's it's everywhere up here fucking For a man Putin, who has mate. really bad hay fever it's fucking everywhere <laughs> and it fucking stinks <laughs> yeah i mean i just thought i just laughed when i saw the the little note i'm just like anything else i mean do you want to say we can't have any butter uh because of ukraine can't i get butter so what 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 was had rapeseed oil in it and Greg's? I don't know. It's a fucking they, bakery. Yeah, I know. But they said they couldn't use that oil. They have to use a different one just to let people know. Just in case some fuckers allergic to it. But everything comes in frozen. <laughs> yeah. Well, it, like it didn't co-op and stuff, isn't it? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. I just made me laugh. I just they're just spitballing, aren't they? If something goes wrong, next I'm gonna go on the phone and be like, oh, mortgage company. Oh, because of what's going on in Ukraine, I can't pay my mortgage bill. And I'm going to go into the petrol station and fill my car up and then be like, oh, because <laughs> what's going on in the Ukraine, I can't afford to pay my fuel, but thanks for that, and just leave. And just walk off, yeah. Just walk off. Well, they're I still blaming know. COVID for a lot of stuff. Like, my mate today had his driving test and he has to rebook it because he partly failed. And um, they've told him that the waiting list is another six months. 
Because of Ukraine? Because of, uh, not Ukraine, because of, uh, what the thing, what's the thing called? Covid. Oh, Covid. What's the thing called? Is that it didn't waste two years of my fucking life. <laughs> Jesus Christ. That's right, because monkey pox are coming, so you have something new to remember. Talking about allergies, yeah, quickly. Well, because I was, I was going to bring this up on the podcast, but I forgot about it. I've been trying to bring this up for ten weeks, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I had all year round allergies. You don't, do you? No, no. But I thought I did, Dan. I thought for seventeen years of my life, yeah, that I was allergic to nuts, like all kinds of nuts. To nuts? Yeah. Why do you think that? Because my mum, being a fucking mental case, yeah, told my schools when I was younger that I was allergic to any kind of nut. So then I remember sitting in like year two when they brought in a walnut cake from someone's mum. I sat there and cried because they were the rest of the class could eat it, and I had to go sit outside just in case I had a reaction. <laughs> and I thought, <laughs> I thought up until I left school that I had a nut allergy because my mum just didn't want me to eat nuts just in case I choked on them. Yeah, that sounds about like something a parent would do. Yeah, that fucking schools are fucked up like that. I had the similar situation where I was bawling my eyes out. We had to. Uh, it was like junior school, and I can't remember why we were like trying different types of biscuits. Hmm. And because I didn't get a bit of paper signed by my mum that says I could eat a biscuit, they wouldn't let me eat them. It's ridiculous. So I had to sit there and watch everyone else eat fucking biscuits. You know why? Because probably one kid died in 1983 and they had to make sure they... (laughs) (laughs) Now I need someone's signature. There's always one of them that ruins it for the rest of us, that fucking child that died in 1983. (laughs) (laughs) I just remember sitting there going like, I eat these at home. Oh yeah, but you haven't got the bit of paper signed. I'm like, fuck the bit of paper. I remember just wailing. Do you know looking through the glass <laughs> on the on the thing? I'm wailing because I was a cry like, like a, lost a cry puppy. child anyway. <laughs> Hoping someone would open the window and sneak you a bit of speed, a bit. Yeah, of I was like, is there no Victoria sponge? <laughs> 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 but my mum let me believe I was allergic. So then I turned down loads of stuff over the years, and I actually left rooms sometimes when people were being overzealous. What, with their nuts? Yeah. Throwing them across the room into people's mouths. Because <laughs> you're not allowed, we... on, not allowed on a plane with nuts, are you? If, if we ever fly on a plane, yeah. I'm just going to bring it up really loudly. Oh, Jamie, I hope no one's got any nuts on this plane. I'll turn to you like this. <laughs> Your face swells up. I'll just be laughing. But then oh, Char- Charlotte's parents are the other way around, yeah. Uh, Michael, Charlotte's brother, is allergic to Brazil nuts. And right. uh, Charlotte's mum decided to do a peanut butter, like homemade peanut butter, but she put Brazil nuts in it and then let Michael try it and he went upstairs and hyperventilated. <laughs> 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 and she told him to stop being dramatic and his throat was closing up. Jesus so Christ. you got that I've level never... of mum and you got my level of mum that was worried about me choking. I've never had a reaction like that. No. I've choked on things. I remember... I was coming back from my auntie's. It was like a 40 minute drive. Mm. And I got one of those like, um, you know, the boiled sweets. And we were driving back and I'm sitting in the back. And I remember swallowing it and choking on it. <laughs> and because I didn't want anyone to know that I I was an idiot. I sort of sat there for like, I just was like. <laughs> <laughs> and then just finally got it down. Slowly just, tired. <laughs> yeah, it just carried on going. No one even knew. I was like. <laughs> <laughs> just carry on there's no problem back here <laughs> oh well as you do as a kid right so we've got two people we were originally going to have one but um david messaged in it seemed like quite a small and i wouldn't say time sensitive but it's easy just to throw it on the end of this episode yeah, and I think because we've had such an influx of people, sometimes we may have to do two every now and then. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't. It's not something that we could speak a whole episode about either. It's quite a quick, yeah, a quick thing. So we just sort of put it on the end. So we've got. Um, I don't think we need to block her name. It's nothing like. So Jenny emailed in, and she's at uni at the moment, and she said she's living with possibly the laziest people. Ever. And the the place that they're living in is an absolute wreck. She says she cleaned the whole house the last time they were on term break, and now it's bad to uh, back to what it was before. 
what should she do? She says, we all pay the rent, but I feel like I'm being forgotten about. Other than the laziness, we get on really well. It just makes me want to move back home so I don't have to deal with it. And then we answered the other bit on the previous question. Oh, the previous episode. Oh, the chicken and the egg. The chicken and egg, yeah. What, right. what would you do if you lived with your brothers? If I did, I would kill them. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, my only experience really at living outside of the house is with my missus that I'm with now. And that took a lot of getting used to. Like Charlotte's very much a clean freak and wants to make sure everything's in its right place, right time. And uh, I'm... I wouldn't say I'm too messy. Most guys are a lot messier than me. Mm-hmm. But I'm... I don't think in it. Like I don't see things. Like Charlotte would be talking to me about a skirting board for about two, three months before I'd even notice there's any dust on them and stuff like that. I never fucking dust. I don't think I've ever, ever dusted in my entire life. Yeah, exactly. And people have different levels of clean. Like I go into Aaron's room and like obviously living at the house for so long, I'll go into my brother's room and he'll tell me it's clean. And until the clean, my mum recently got a cleaner, until the, she recently got that cleaner, that room was always fucked in it. And he would always tell me, <laughs> <laughs> he'd always be like, it's fine, it's fine. I dusted the other day. I was like, I can fucking, I would walk in there and have an asthma attack. <laughs> my brother's like that. My brother, um, Toby, he has like everything on the floor. Mm. And mum's always like, for God's sake, tidy your room. And he's like, no, no no and then the other day i went round there and he's like for fuck's sake this place is a fucking shithole and i'm like well clean the fucking room then he's like no no and then he'll stay at mine and mum will clean it while I, while he's away mm. and then he'll come back and he'll be like who the fuck clean my room i can't fucking find anything and it's all like all under his bed and she's cleaned everything <laughs> give it a day and it's about it exactly the same it was <laughs> i do think i genuinely do believe that boys with uh, obviously that live with their mums are worse than anyone are the, probably the messiest and worst people ever because my, like when I lived at home I was terrible my brothers are still terrible like my, yeah but my sister was my sisters were pretty bad for like leaving clothes and stuff all over the floor when I went round to stay at my dad's yeah I suppose but that's the problem that you've got here is that they've just obviously uni you're like it's probably your first time living on your own and really you i know it sounds bad but you're young enough that you don't really know what's going on yeah you just sort of like get on with it and you just assume that someone's going to come along and clean up for you yeah students are known for being messy you know yeah i live with someone that had just moved out and uh absolutely did my head in we we did a thing where it was like you take turns it doesn't work don't ever that's the worst thing you do is oh, I'll do it today and you do it tomorrow because it doesn't work and he used to do a thing where if, like baking trays and, and saucepans and stuff like that he would fill with water yeah I know like, who you're talking about now yeah and he'd be like <laughs> I remember you moaned about this <laughs> well, no, he would like the first time he filled everything with water and then I went into the kitchen it looked like we'd had a leak in like multiple places because all the counters had like trays filled with water Fucking I'm like hell. what are you doing He's like, oh, I'm soaking them. I'm like, what, for two days? What's going on here? You soak it for an hour. If you, it's yeah, you, to get off. you fill it with water at the beginning, yeah. do the washing up, and then clean it at the end. But no, he, he leaves it for like two, three days. And then, because I'm quite stubborn, I'm like, I'm thinking to myself, that's not my fucking turn now that you filled them with water. So I'll just leave it. <laughs> I think the longest we went with like trays filled with water was about two weeks. Because I was like, <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not fucking doing it. You know what I mean? mate it's unbelievable that that would fucking do my nothing like me and Charlotte do this thing now which is out of pure laziness is uh, like all the people of the world are going to get upset with me right now when I say this but we like put foil over everything like all, over all our baking trays and stuff and then wipe yeah, but it off. I do that do you? yeah yeah if you're doing like sausages and stuff like that you put tin foil down it keeps it catches all like the fat in that yeah, I, I do. I do it everything. Every every single thing I cook, it goes on foil, isn't it? And I rip <laughs> that off, and then I wipe the tray down, and that's it done. Yeah, but I see. I I was doing the same with like burgers, sausages, and stuff like that. And I've started doing it for like pizzas. Yeah. 
Which well no, mum my mum uses um baking parchment. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't have that. I've only got tin foil because the trays, the pizzas, no matter how long you cook them, it always sticks to the fucking tray. And I went round there one day and she put the paper and I was like, oh, I didn't even fucking think of that. And now I do it all the time. It doesn't stick at all. See, we have one of the, uh, this is, this is like a double conversation, but, um, I have one of them pizza things where it's got like holes in it, isn't it? So it that, can't yeah, stick. but that's the one the worst. Oh, the really? Chicago town. Yeah. You book a Chicago town on that. Fucking mm. terrible. Really? The, the dough seeps through the holes <laughs> and cooks into the fucking tray. <laughs> <laughs> this is fucking first you. world problems, man. Isn't ne- it? Never at uni buy Chicago Town pizza in the holy <laughs> tray. <laughs> no, I. But then there's another occasion, right? I lived with someone before him, and he was. What we did was we cleaned up semi after ourselves when we were like cooking dinner and that, but like. On a Saturday or a Sunday, we would clean the whole place. Yeah. And that's what I'd still do now. And I think that was worked out the best thing is that you're all cleaning at the same time. Mm. And then by the next week, it's it's not crazy dirty. You know what I mean? But it, it gets quicker mm. than what, you know, every week you do it. And then if people are leaving trays and that during the week, that's their, their thing. But at the end of the day, everyone's going to clean it on a Saturday. Yeah. Yeah, you know I mean, makes more sense. Like, I mean, if you're living with a house of four people, what's that like? You know, one hoovering, two doing the washing up, washing and drying. There's always that lazy know. cunt, though, Dan. There is always that lazy cunt. Yeah, but she said that you know, apart from that, they've gotten quite well. So make an agreement, a house agreement. Yeah, yeah. Have like a meeting. The only other thing that you could do is like a chart, which is really nerdy and. No one likes that. Rubs people chart. up the wrong way as well. Yeah, exactly. I think. Yeah, it makes you feel recharged. I think that's the best thing. Like, you don't have to worry it through the week. And generally, on a Monday and Tuesday, it will still be clean. It's only like towards the weekend, and then everyone gets together. It takes an hour on a yeah. Saturday. Yeah. Everyone's hands on decks. It's done. I mean, it doesn't have to be Saturday. It can be any day because uni students don't do full weeks, so they do like four days or three days yeah and some of them might be working or something etc yeah yeah. but um yeah i think you're right i think try to come to a house agreement if people still aren't pulling their weight threaten to i don't know isolate them from the house (laughs) i don't think you can do that (laughs) (laughs) just give them the cold shoulder yeah morning yeah fuck off they just wake up they're locked in their bedroom and they can't get out uh, <laughs> <laughs> all their dirty dishes just piled up next to their door when they open it up <laughs> or just do what like a typical uh, wife does and like come down and then just say nothing is wrong but there's something wrong there's something and wrong. just do a lot of undertones huffing and uh, slamming slamming things. of plates and stuff until they figure out what the fuck is wrong it takes a man about two to three cups days of tea in dirty cups yeah <laughs> there's no there's no clean ones left you haven't you haven't done the washing up oh what did you want milk did you did you want milk <laughs> i think the um that's slightly toxic isn't it <laughs> yeah it is yeah you don't want to do that while you're at uni <laughs> i think getting everyone together and and picking a day and just cleaning it all together you and I mean? you'll probably find that it's annoying you but there's probably someone else at least if say if there's four of you i would say at least two of you are getting annoyed by it one person's in the middle and the fourth person is probably the lazy bastard and that yeah, doesn't th- even realize <laughs> yeah and wouldn't even notice that they're annoying you with it but she did say that she's brought up previously didn't she no no no, it just says that she cleaned she the place the last herself. time. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So they might just expect her to do that now. That's why she's got to nip it in the butt, isn't it? I think that's the best thing. It's like, you can go down the chart route. Do not do the take it in turns because you end up being the, oh, it's your turn sort of person. And that's, you don't want to be that fucking. No, you end up being a nag. Yeah, yeah. So you can go down the chart route. I wouldn't do it. It's because you've still got to be that person that's like checking the chart and that and i i've been in arguments where it says but the chart says it's your day (laughs) 
you know what I mean? When I lived at home with my mum and dad and they were getting yeah. us through washing up and shit. Oh, um, if you me. haven't got a dishwasher, maybe try and invest or something because that's just... Oh, fuck, I don't have a dishwasher, man. That's a waste of money. Yeah, but that's just you because you live by yourself, Dan. Imagine four people's shit. Yeah, but you just got to rinse it out when you do it. Yeah, oh, I mean, kill me. When if I, I, if with... I didn't have a dishwasher now, I'd be dead. Nah, when I lived with that first guy, I just used to like cook my dinner and I'd wash the stuff up as I'm going. <laughs> Because I didn't want to come back out of my room. I remember you. I remember you going mental when you lived there. I oh, went with the 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 pot filler. We're calling the pot filler. Yeah, I used to do my head and used to hide in my room because I didn't want to fucking deal with it. I like, I ate a lot of pizzas that because I just had to use one tray. Do you remember do with it. when he come back one day and we we were all drunk in the kitchen, and I was lifting weights in your kitchen, smoking a cigarette while I was doing it. And we <laughs> promised him that we wouldn't smoke inside. And I was just like an orangutan, like doing chest press. Oh, yeah, because when you get drunk, we're just like, lift weights, lift weights. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I was banging out chest press. And I had like a fag hanging out my mouth. And he walked in and I was like, you right, mate? <laughs> that was the... <laughs> the situation that you don't want to get into because me and him had like we don't speak anymore because it was like resentment yeah because of the way it was so it's best to talk about it as quick as you can nip it in the bud because you end up just not being friends in the end like you just I, I, he probably still doesn't even know but it was like everyone was like oh he's the nicest guy he's the nicest guy and he was a nice guy but he'd never lived on his own before no and you don't know someone really until you live with them. Oh, definitely not. No. And it was just was the I couldn't wait to get out there. I was so glad to go back. I was moving up to Scotland, which is why I left. But I was really glad to uh, to get out of there. And uh, I don't know what the house looked like. But I didn't like his friends either. I was a big bastard back then. So I used to come home from work, and they used to be like in the kitchen at the table, and I just be like. I'm not eating today. Just go out and come and go upstairs <laughs> and go in my room. Just fucking hide away. That's why you're better off, up, better off up there, Dan, because you're a better person. And I don't know anyone up here. <laughs> they can be aggressive towards. <laughs> yeah. Just towards the cat. The cat gets everything. You're hearing him meowing in the background. He better not be. I don't want to hear no meowing in my vo- my uh, my microphone. I'll be fucking kicking off if I have to edit that out. <laughs> nah, it'd be right. They'll just think I'm abusing him or something. <laughs> it's okay he's ginger anyway but yeah that's what I would do anyway it's best to get out of the way and especially if you're at uni you've got enough to worry about than uh, having to like clean up after everyone and stuff like that it's their deal especially if you're getting on if you're getting on like it's not too late I remember going to uh, my mates he was going to uni in Cambridge mm. and um they didn't give a fuck. There was three of them in that house and n- none of them give a fuck about the clean- cleanliness. I remember going around, going, they had a toilet underneath the stairs yeah. and I went in there and I went for a pee and I went to go wash my hands and there was glass in the in the bathroom sink. What the fuck? And I come out and I was like, you know there's glass in your bathroom sink? He goes, oh yeah, someone was uh, going for a piss and they dropped their pint. And I'm like, <laughs> oh, was that last night? And he goes, no, it was about a month ago. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I remember I went up to see Kieran when he lived in Nottingham at his university and they were staying in still staying in the like the on site rooms then. Oh yeah, you get like a, a room and you share a kitchen and a bathroom or something. Yeah, it's like dorms. So yeah. there's like ten people in the dorm and there's like they had like five fridges that were split in half between everyone. And it was like really odd. And it, but when I walked in there, fucking hell, man! Like the bins were, bins were overflowing. The work, the thing I hate the most, which is why I hate this weather, other than the hay fever, is if you got doors open and stuff, there's always flies. Oh yeah. And uh, because their bins were overflowing, they were on like the third floor or something, and there was flies everywhere. It was disgusting. I just remember walking in and there was like an old mum in it. It was like, is everyone going to clean this bin up? Is everyone going to do this? I was like, can you please bring that down? I'm not going to be staying here like this. Like I was a fucking... <laughs> They're like a naggy aren't you? Yeah, and that, that, was their, that was a lot of their first um, interactions with me. 
And that was a mixture of boys and girls. So it's not down to sex, I don't think. I think it's down to how you're No, brought they up. can both be around each other. Like I said, it's once once you move out, you're like, I can do whatever I want. Yeah. And the and the first thing you don't do is clean up because your mum's and your dad's always like, clean your room. Yeah. Clean up. You're not going to clean it up. Do the washing up. Why have you left that on the side? And you're just like, I don't have to worry about that now. When me and Shah first moved in together, we did this disgraceful thing where. She don't know if she'll get annoyed at me for saying this. She probably she probably won't hear it. And she doesn't listen either. She don't listen, no. Until <laughs> uh, <laughs> I make um, a little clip and put it on Twitter. <laughs> you better fucking not. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, we used to. Because we lived in the building. We was only on the first floor, so it wasn't like we had to go up and down many stairs. I, we would have a recycling and a normal bin, but right, that would fill up really quickly. So then we'd be like, okay, we'll just put that bin bag there next to the bin on the floor, and then we'll bring that down next time we go down. And then obviously I'm being on an early shift, I wake up like a crazy orangutan and a pure temper walk straight past the bins down the stairs and then Charlotte was getting aggy at me so she wouldn't take them so then we were going sometimes we were going three or four days with these bin bags just sitting in the kitchen <laughs> <laughs> then eventually I would get annoyed at them and I'd be like right I'm taking them down and then we went, we went for like a year of doing that and then I remember someone coming around and there was bin bags there and then that embarrassed me so then I was like I'm never doing that again and then I got over it I do loads of annoying little habits like uh that my ex used to hate me for, but now I just blame it on my ADHD, like uh, leaving empty toilet roll tubes. Oh, in the I remember bathroom. you mentioned this before, yeah. And um, leave my old contact lens. I got daily contact lenses. I just put them on the side of the sink, and they yeah. Dry you up. left them here when you stayed here. Oh, did I? Yeah, because I was I like, what the fuck was is that on the side? Hammered. Rocco was sniffing it. Yeah, yeah, contact lenses. I do stuff like that, like little annoying, like things I don't even. I just take them out. And never and think then, about it again. No. And then yeah. you just hear, do you have to do that? And I'm like, do what? And he's like, leave you this. I'm like, do I? Don't act like you don't know what you're doing. And I'm like, <laughs> and I just go, just can't you throw it away? Why do I have to throw it away? Well, I didn't notice. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's like, but actually, I saw a TikTok that someone was like, annoying habits that ADHD people don't know they're doing. And leaving the toilet roll tubes was one of them. Oh, really? Yeah, so, ha. Definitely got a fucking escape out of that one. I still do it. I don't give a fuck. Make a little pyramid. While I'm on the toilet, sometimes I stack them like a game. <laughs> and then I put them back again. And then I stack them again. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. That would do me. I think that would do me in. Although I do have a habit of not changing the bins in the toilets. So I would, oh, they, mate, could, I they could be bit. totally overflowing. Yeah, you just push it down a bit more. Yeah, I've never ever, in the time I lived with Charlotte, never in my life picked that bin up. <laughs> Not once. <laughs> and she always says about it, and I'm like, what? I said, I've done the whole house, Charlotte. What are you talking about? She's like, look at this. She's wheeling it down the stairs, showing me it. I'm like, <laughs> I hate that fucking bin. I think as well... The best thing that's ever happened to me is old cleaners. Oh, I should get a cleaner. I was thought about paying my mum to do it. She's coming around tomorrow to put my washing out because I don't want to use a tumble dryer and I'm not here, I'm at work. Well, <laughs> you're already halfway there, Dan. Give her 20 quid and get her to fucking look after the house. I know for well that I've got to do a few things before she comes around, otherwise I'll get an angry text message. <laughs> so after this, I've got to go down, I've got to like do the washing up and then like do a bit of the tidy on my count, my table. <laughs> I um I was on Twitter the other day because I'm trying to self selfishly is that the right word just fucking put us out there I'm just putting our link and everything ah uh, what was that the word podcast oh look I've got a podcast fucking slap that in there but um oh yeah that's someone what I'm like it's, I I uh, shamelessly shamelessly yeah. um are, are like promoting ourselves <laughs> yeah all the time just fucking no reason whatsoever someone was like oh does anyone know a good history podcast and i was like oh i've got a podcast <laughs> no, I'm doing this well it's our history but not your history <laughs> and um yeah no someone said what was your favorite saturday morning cartoon well it wasn't saturday morning for us it was just morning in general uh biker mice from mars 
Biker Mike. Uh, biker. Mice. Mice from Mars. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, yeah. That was my favourite one. That used to be like sick, in, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With the, I swear the bad guy was like some fat dude in a suit. He was like all greasy. Don't remember it that well. I I remember the characters. I used to have them as figurines. Yeah, the brown mouse that had like a metal arm. Yeah. And then there was one that had like a uh, like a laser eye. I remember that. Was that the same guy? That might have been the same guy. Oh no, was it the white one had the lasers? It was the white one. He had like he a metal leader. eye. And then you had the slightly <coughs> stupid one. Was he like yellow? I can't remember. I'm going to have to... Let me see the picture. I'm going to have to Google him, I think. <laughs> but yeah, I, was, I used to love the... The cartoons now aren't the same. Because you got what... Um, Bucky O'Hare. Do you remember Bucky O'Hare? I don't remember Bucky O'Hare. Ah, oh, Bucky O'Hare with the, the duck with four arms. No. Oh, mate. Ah. Oh. Fucking call it a green Duck rabbit. With four arms. Yeah, yeah, four arms. It was a green rabbit, Bucky O'Hare. I can't remember the theme song. Um, no. Okay, I can I can hear the tune, but I can't think of the words. What about? Um, oh yeah, so there's a there's a brown one. He has like a quiff. He wears sunglasses and a biker jacket. He's got a metal arm. No, the big white one with a eye patch and a metal arm. Oh, okay. And then the white, the littler, stupider one has the metal on his face. What colour is he? He's like a like a a beige colour. I think completely mixed up then. They tried to redo it and it weren't as good. Oh, really? Yeah, they tried to bring it back. Oh, yeah, there is a newer one here, yeah. Yeah, absolute shite. Um... Yeah, Bucky O'Hare. Um, what was the Mighty Ducks? Did you watch the Mighty Ducks? Mighty Ducks, I watched. Yeah, fucking quality. Cool. Love the Mighty Ducks. Um, Earthworm Jim. No, <laughs> what the fuck is that? You don't know what Earthworm Jim <laughs> Earthworm is? Earthworm Jim. <laughs> How? I'm only like what three or four years older than you. Yeah. <laughs> Earthworm Jim. He was like, it was a worm. His head was a worm, and it was in like a space muscly spacesuit. And he used to like take his head out and whip it. Oh my fucking hell! That from Jim was amazing. Um, I remember uh, Pinky in the Rain. Oh mate, come on! I mean that's good. That's not. Yeah, I mean that's the uh, um, Maniacs. What was it? Something Maniacs. Don't know. Chicken and cow. Cow and chicken. Cow and chicken. It? Fucking love cow and chicken. <laughs> really obscure. The the big red really bum. weird. If you watch that now in your heart, you'd be fucking weirded out. Then you know. It'd still be as good. What about um, Sam and Max? Do you ever watch Sam and Max? No. Nah. The rabbit and the dog. The I detectives. remember. I know. I remember what they were, but I don't. I didn't watch them. Oh man, I can't believe only a few years and you haven't seen these shows. What about you? You watched the original Turtles, though, right? Yeah. I was a. I I grew up big time on the Amazing Spider Man. Oh, that was good. When that first come out, the X Men. That oh, you're that, you're talking about like uh, is it Fox Kids or that was on? I used to watch Cartoon Network, and then I think it was probably Boomerang on Fox Kids. Fox Kids. They did a live action Turtles with a with a, a girl turtle. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. <laughs> That's terrible. What Power about, Rangers. Um, I grew up on as well. Oh, mate, fucking. Love the, we were talking about Power Rangers last episode, weren't we? With uh, Green Ranger. I remember. Do you remember? There was a film that came out, yeah, and they went into like the Bermuda Triangle, and it what was did? the Power Rangers, yeah, and they all were like wearing weird like samurai fucking. Oh no, you're talking about the first movie, the Mighty Morphin with um, Zordon, Zordon and Mister Ooze, Mister Ooze. No, is it the same movie? Yeah, so the they released Ooze. I remember him. He was like big purple guy, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, and um, he finds. Um, oh, Zordon the good guy. Zordon. Is he the one in the tube? Zordon's the guy in the tube, yeah. Yeah, he finds him and he he destroys it. So he sends them to find the animal powers. And that's when they get those get-ups and there's like the... And they go the to frog. the forest. Yeah, 
Yeah. You get that that hot woman with the staff, and she's like spinning it around. Mm. She's tiny clothes, man. Fucking love that film. That film's so good. It still stands up now. I watched it a couple of weeks ago. Oh really? Yeah, yeah. Still pretty <laughs> fucking good. I must and the Green Ranger's in that because I think he's Tommy, the White Ranger. Yeah, yeah, could be. Yeah. yeah. And then, what else did I watch when I was young? Courage the Cowardly Dog. Oh man, I fucking love Courage the Cowardly Dog. That was such a good fucking show. Did you ever watch, um, oh, what was it called? It was like Mighty, it was like the Power Rangers, but he was like a bug. It was green and he had a motorcycle. Beetle bugs. No, that was the one that was three of them, wasn't it? Yeah. This was, I'm sure this was just one guy. And he had a green suit and a, a motorcycle. No. I can't what that was called. I don't really know what beetle bugs were either. I just remember the name. I'm sure they were just. A... Do you remember Street Sharks? No. Oh my god, man! Fucking hell! <laughs> Street Sharks. They were like they had. They were surfers. Oh yes, Shark and they and got Georgie. massive heads. At sharks and they used to go underneath the concrete, and you could see the fin. Sharky and Georgie, wasn't it? Oh, well, that sounds a bit. I don't know. <laughs> Sharky and Georgie. That's what I call my first fish, my first goldfish <laughs> after them. I'm sure it was them. Yeah, street sharks. And you got um Mummies Alive? No. Um Gargoyles. Gargoyles. Yes. Gargoyles are classic. I love that show, man. I yeah. loved it. I loved it purely because it was like based in Scotland as well at the beginning. I don't eat I re it's on um Disney uh Disney Plus. Ugh. And I rewatched it, and I don't remember that beginning bit, where they're at the castle and when you see the original it. war and stuff. Yeah, and they get portrayed. I don't remember that at all. That was a film, I think. I think it started off as a film, and then they made the TV show. Because I had that on. I remember how I had that on VHS back in the day when you had fucking videos, man. Do you remember how painful that was having to fucking rewind the video? I'll be kind. Rewind. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I never did that fuck that I remember um, staying at my auntie's I fucking hate my auntie and um, she'd uh, she'd gone to work or something so I was in the house on my own mm. so I was like watching videos and um, I put in is it the the one with Arnie where he gets cloned and then, oh yes, I love that film. What is, um, what's that one called? The sixth? That's no, not the sixth day, is it? Um, it is the sixth day, I think. It's under their eye, in it. They've got the little tings. Yeah, the little yeah. dots. Yeah, I remember watching that, and I watched it, and I went to take it out, and it the machine chewed it up. <laughs> so I pulled it out, and obviously all the fucking all the, some half the people that listen to this won't know what a fucking videotape is, and it like I had to take it out, and I used my finger and I wound it back up. It was chewed to fuck. Like, you wouldn't be able to watch it. So I wound it back up. <laughs> <laughs> and I just put it back in the box and I put it on the shelf. And she came back and she was like, oh, what movies did you watch today? And I was like, oh, no, I just watched the telly. <laughs> 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 and it's clear that she didn't fucking watch it because I've never, never come back. I did it at my nan's house. My nan used to have, like, loads of, like, Disney films, innit? Oh, Yeah. And I just did a similar thing. Do you know what used to get like trapped coming out? Yeah, that's what, yeah, it gets hooked. Exact, yeah, it gets hooked. And I was like, I, I've always had a temper. <laughs> <laughs> um, just to put that out there. And I just remember pulling it and pulling it and pulling it. And then I eventually just held on to the cassette player and just pulled the fucker out. And I picked it up and I threw it out the window. <laughs> 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 and it, I just remember it bouncing in the garden and then like when once my temper had simmered down I was like maybe I should short that problem out and I like went and hit it in the bottom of the bin the, the wheelie bin in the back garden and then I remember my nan going oh um, so Snow White and the Seven Dwarves has gone missing we, we've got the case but we haven't got the thing and I was like oh <laughs> I must have only been about like seven or eight so it's times where you just don't want to get in trouble, isn't it? Yeah. Aaron did it to me once. Do you know when DVDs were a thing? Well, technically they still are a thing, well, Jamie. Well, kind, kind of, yeah. 
streaming services now, Dan. We're in all, all, those, all those pound DVDs sitting in CX, they're still there, Jamie. Just because you don't <laughs> see them doesn't mean they don't exist. <laughs> <laughs> That's not my cup of tea. But um, I remember Aaron being a young child, and I can't remember what DVD it was. It was something... It was so, It probably could have been something like Power Rangers or something like that, or it might have been the Pokemon movie, and uh, we were like, "Oh, go and get it for us, Aaron." And Aaron had like temper tantrums, and he went down and got it. And me and Kieran were sitting there, like I was about ten, Kieran was about eight, and we're sitting on their ottoman at the end of the bed, waiting for Aaron to bring it back up. And Aaron walked to the top of the stairs and threw the disc at us. Like a fucking javelin or a discus, yeah. Discus, yeah. And it just smashed off the wall and it went into a thousand pieces. And I remember it took all the power in our bodies not to completely kill that child and throw him down the stairs. And mum was like, what's wrong with you? I was like, we can't watch the film because he's destroyed it. And then mum was like, well, you should have sent him down then, should you? I was like, that's... That's not that's what, a simple that's not fucking really task. The problem. Yeah, <laughs> he was way too young. He was probably about two. He shouldn't have. Yeah, well, he clearly knew what he was doing because he found the fucking disc, didn't he? He found the disc, which just yeeted at me, little fucker. Saying of him, how was his birthday meal you went to the other day? It was really good. It was a, it was a crossover. The pub that we went to had just been, just been taken over by Papa Jay's. All right. So. Oh wait, what? Papa Jay's is gone. No, they'd taken them over, so they're expanding. Oh, sorry, okay, yeah. So they did like a Papa Jay's uh, barbecue day with, on, the, on the outside grill. Oh, for people that don't know, Papa Jay's is like a tapas. Indian. Sort of tapas, Indian yeah. tapas thing that's in Luton, yeah. It's, it's really good. Like, surpasses any Indian food that you've probably had before, I would say. Probably one of the best Indians ever. Chili paneer, man, fucking it destroys oh, me, but it's so tasty. And um, that was just by pure coincidence, and then we booked my mum had booked the place, and then we found that out because I was complaining because we were in a pod, but it was twenty four degrees, isn't it? A pod? Yeah, we were in like an outdoor pod. Fucking hell! So the plastic was like magnifying the heat. Yeah, it was glass, so it was like a full blown glass house. So there's like, oh yeah, we have aircon, it's fine. I turned up the aircon unit. It's just like a little standalone aircon unit, and Kieran was sitting in front of it. So Kieran was the only one getting the fucking coldness. So I opened the put up the elements. So I was like, I'm not sitting in this. But um, the food was really good. Had our usual banter and all that stuff, and then headed back. And then me and Charlotte were babysitting in the evening. Hmm. That's alright then. Did you get your brother anything? I'm ordering him a hat like this but uh, for his team what's his team Orlando Magic doesn't mean anything to me <laughs> one of the three there's three teams that are shit at the minute Orlando Magic's one of them well but he's sticking with them though it shows yeah. you a lot do you remember <laughs> do you know Big Shaq you must know Big Shaq Shaquille O'Neal Oh, Shaquille O'Neal, yeah, of course I do, yeah. He, he's one of their like most famous players. Is that who you play for? He played for them, he was drafted by them originally before he went to the Lakers. And he, he went oh. eventually went to the Celtics as well. Fucking hell. Do you remember his movies? No. Do you remember his movies? No. There was one, <laughs> there was one where he was a genie. Oh, I, me- I do remember seeing pictures of that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Fucking brilliant. And then there was one... Um, where he made a suit, an Iron Man suit. Oh, he right. had a big sledgehammer. It, seriously, it's fucking quality. Is it? <laughs> yeah. Basketball like a, and acting's always been like hand in hand, isn't it? Like in a shit way, yeah, it has, yeah. A lot of them do it. Did you watch that um, Uncle Jew or something it was called? Uncle Drew, yeah. Um, With yeah. Kari Irvin. That was pretty funny, actually. That was a really good film, yeah. I love yeah, that yeah. film. But, um, um, yeah, Shaq. What's his name? Iron... No, it wasn't called Iron Man, obviously. What's his name's new film? Adam Sandler's new film on Netflix is about a basketball coach and it's got all the basketball players in it. Right. Well, a load of basketball players, not all of them. Um, it's him playing a straight role. Who? Adam Sandler. Well, he normally plays a straight role, doesn't he? 
No, he's normally he plays a comedian, doesn't he? Comedy. Oh, you mean a serious role? Yeah. I think it meant straight as in gender. <laughs> <laughs> no, but um, it was good. It was really good. Definitely worth watching that film. Kazam, by the way, was the film that he was in where he was a genie. Kazam. Steel. It was called Steel. If you can ever find that film, I had to download it, I think. There's only one I could get it. It is well worth the watch. It's crap, but in an amazing way. <laughs> like, absolutely amazing. And because it works so well as well, because he's fucking gigantic. Yeah. And I always remember the montage of him making his suit. And like it's bulletproof and stuff, and he's got like this huge sled sledgehammer mm. that some guy in a wheelchair like modifies, so it's like it can like electrocute people and stuff. So good, so so good. And then he's been in a lot of stuff as himself. Do you remember when he was in? Um, he's in the Longest Yard. He is in Uncle Drew. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course he is. He's so funny in that. Yeah. Do you remember him in in the Longest Yard? Yeah. Where he's like laying in bed with that tiny woman. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he's so good. <laughs> Class. Love it. Right. So we've got this other guy's question as well. Sorry, I covered my mouth. When I had my mouth when I said that. <clears throat> so we got another question from David. And he says, um, it's mostly theoretical, but very important if it works out. There, there is a chance I may end up paid the equivalent of one year's wage due to a contested labour issue. If this happens, the money comes through at once. I'm not entirely sure how to best use it. My instinct is to pay down my debt and upgrade my vehicle, but my wife would prefer we expanded our basement bathroom to include a shower, which is costly, um, but it would prevent her father who lives with them in needing to go upstairs to use their shower. Um, this being a very t- occasion, one big payout, I'm very concerned about wasting it. What 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 does he think we should do? He should do. Well, if it's a situation where it's the father-in-law's mobility to get up there, like because of his age then I'd probably go for that. But if it if he's still fit and able to get up and down the stairs, upgrade your car. You always need your car to work. So upgrade your car, pay off some debt. When you pay off the debt, it will make you feel better about yourself. Yeah, I don't think the car is important in my personal opinion. I think the debt, I think the debt is, I mean, is that if, if the car is still working, would there not be enough money to pay some of the debt off and do the bathroom as well? I would That's say a, so, yeah. That would be my idea because I was able to pay my debt off. I've been in debt since I was 18. Mm-hmm. And because my granddad passed away, he left me some money. I was able to, some of my car's mine. I don't owe any money to anyone except my mortgage. And it's fucking amazing. Like having to, for so many years spent going to like Asda and having to worry about buying a box of fucking cereal and now I just go in and buy what I need mm. obviously it's still because everything's it puts going stress up on the, it's put stress on your life that you don't know that you it's putting stress on your life yeah and once it's gone it's absolutely amazing knowing that you don't know anyone yeah anything and the, the thing is like debt people are the people that will chase you the most they do they don't leave you alone no, and they say about oh, get, let us know and we'll we'll help you out. But they just want you to ring them so they've got a hold of you, so they know where you are. That's all it fucking is. Yeah, that's not gonna stop them getting a someone to come around your house and fucking take all your shit, is it? I I agree with Jamie in saying that with the father, if it's an absolute necessity, then yeah, you know I mean, sure, yeah. But I think the vehicle thing, unless the vehicle's buggered, you know what I mean? But if you're driving, say you're driving 45 minutes each way to work and you're worried about that car on the motorway or he's American in there, what what do they call motorways? Freeways. Freeways. Um, 
and you're worried about that every single day of your life to not upgrade the car because <laughs> that happened with me with the Astra I was like this car one day is going to give up on me and I, and I, I had, had a problem with my Astra it. as well mm. I think most importantly I think nowadays is if you can get rid of your debt get rid of your debt yeah you know what I mean because it's only going to get tougher with everything going up it's just become ridiculous and the best way to get through it is not to have any debt or at least find a way to consolidate it. So if you've if you've got a certain amount you can pay off and the rest of it you can put together, so it's like a lower payment each month, then do it. Yeah. yeah. If you oh, can't yeah, if you sure. can't clear it all. Yeah, I agree with that. If anything, I would say the debt was most important. I know it feels when you get a load of money that you should go out and and buy nice things or expand your house and stuff like that but you think I mean, if you sat down and you worked out all the money you're paying out to all these different people if you paid that off that money isn't going anywhere but you yeah you know what I mean like, so you could upgrade 600... your car purely because you haven't got to pay debts yeah exactly wait a couple of months and then you can do it yourself yeah that's the way I would look at it I'd love a, a little payment out because I need new fucking windows and a new boiler <laughs> but we don't have labour disputes here I don't even have a fucking union in my work there's a union in my work but because I'm a subcontractor I don't get no fucking say anyway <laughs> oh it's fucking mental they're absolutely useless I had it in the co-op when I did my dispute mm. and uh, the only time I ever wanted to use them and I was like oh my um, my uh, interview thing for the letter I sent in is on this date and he goes oh, I'm on holiday and I'm like well you told me to put the letter in. Oh well, I didn't know you were going to put that date on it. Well, I only see you twice a week, uh, twice every two, once every tw- once every two weeks, mate. How am I supposed to get in contact with you? That's bad, isn't it? You're supposed to be there to look after you. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Oh no, I'm going on holiday. All right, mate. Thanks very much. Uh, and that meeting was a big fuck up, anyway. It's all fun and games until you got to have a meeting with your big boss. Fit. I stay away from out of management now. <laughs> the thing is with that is that like I've said it before about that that company is like they empowered us they like gave us like a false sense of responsibility but then we had no way of resolving like the small issues mm-hmm. so then they basically nipped like stole our fucking younger years from us and let us think that we're doing better than we are and then when it come down to it they didn't give a fuck they did not no. give a fuck about you no not at all it was, I always said when you're in there the best place to be in the car is at the bottom yeah you know what I mean yeah it is definitely and like I will never fall for that bullshit again like when I hear people saying stuff at work about oh I do this and that might help me get this and I'm like yeah alright mate no. I'll be at home when you're doing that bullshit because when I was doing 16 hour days and getting paid for 8 hours and, yeah. and was thinking I'm doing the right thing and then they turn around and do like random shit to you I just think no yeah because they say oh you don't have to do that many hours but it's like but you expect me to do that many hours though it's the same when they're like we don't expect you to chase the people stealing food out of the out of the place yeah, but they do. They do want you to chase them. Do you remember I got hit by a car? Yeah. <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> I got hit by a car on the corner by that hair salon. Do you remember the hair salon? Not a hair nail salon. Oh yeah. I was chasing the shop the crackhead. I was chasing this crackhead up the road. He had about fifty pounds worth of meat on him. I was chasing him up the road. And then he went straight across the road quick enough. I didn't realise there was a car coming. I ran out straight after and went over the bonnet, yeah. And um, I was laying on the floor, like, feeling my leg, because my leg went numb. And I was like, oh, fuck, that's me, I'm dead and all this shit. And I was, like, having a meltdown. (laughs) (laughs) And uh, I got back to the shop. And then the manager at the time was telling me that I was going to be on disciplinary for chasing the shoplifter. I hurt myself because I was like, I'm, I'm going to have to go and get an x-ray. 
and they were like, why do you need an x-ray? And I was like, because I can't walk. My leg had completely <laughs> like died on me. And I had like a real big black bruise and it was like a bruising on the bone. Mm-hmm. And I remember like messaging her and saying, I can't come in for a few days. And she's like, why not? You can come in and just do office work. And I was like, no, I'm not coming in. And then I come back and she tried to put me on disciplinary. Then I kicked off and then she didn't do it in the end. Fucking disciplinary. That's what I mean, yeah, like, they want you to chase them, but if you get into the thing, they're like, nah, you're not supposed to chase them. Mm. That's why I didn't. I was like, fuck off. There was another, t- <laughs> there was another time where... <laughs> I was meant... I don't know why I did shit like this. There was another time... It was the same guy that hit you with a bag of coal. Do you remember that, geezer? Oh, the Doherty brothers. Yeah, one of the Doherty brothers. They're probably dead now. Fucking but um, yeah, they, they probably died of overdoses years ago. Foaming at the mouth, they came in once when they were like fucking spitting everywhere because they couldn't function properly. Yeah. And the, do you remember we had a, a big boss man called Ed? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And he was standing there talking to me. He was a nice guy. And he was standing there talking to me, and then the they shouted security to shop floor over the tallow, but I was already in the meat aisle, so I clocked the Doherty brothers running out the door. And I grabbed one of them by their hoodie. And do you remember the A-frames outside the front that had, like, the advertisement on it? I put him yeah. straight through it. <laughs> <laughs> I think I remember this. <laughs> and, yeah, because I remember we pulled the CCTV up because everyone thought it was funny. And I'm standing there and, like, Ed had followed me out of the shop and the crackhead's, like, halfway through the A-frame on the floor. And then I was like, <laughs> let me just call the police, Ed. Hang on. And then he told the manager the next day that I was being unneededly aggressive. <laughs> <laughs> but they're so light, aren't they? Because they only weigh about five stone. I-, I picked him up and threw him. I didn't expect him to go through it. Oh, yeah, because he he's a crackhead, isn't he? They don't yeah. eat. <laughs> Fuck, I always remember that when he fucking... Yeah, I was following him. And I was facing up the shelves at the same time. And I looked away for must have been like a second... And then he just whacks me in the fucking head. I just think you're a fucking dickhead. He was a twat, man. And yeah. he he punched his brother in the face once, yeah, because he went to punch Ezra as we were having an altercation at the front of the store. Me and me, me and Ezra were trying to stop him. Ezra's a really innocent church kid, wasn't he? Mm-hmm. And um, he swung for Ezra. Ezra ducked, and he punched his brother straight in the face. <laughs> 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 I just remember sorry, leaving notes man. like four days a week saying sorry to the boss I'd be like sorry didn't get delivery finished because I was dealing with so and so between these hours and these hours feel free to check the CCTV and that would be like four or five times a week I'd be writing about the Doherty brothers yeah but they wouldn't let us get a security guard because it's money in it yeah fucking joke what was I watching something and I was like oh it's to do with money can't remember no anyway it's not important um i was watching uh love and lock up you ever watched it love that is that where they're in prison someone I, starts chatting to people that are in prison pen pals there and then they fucking, fall in love with them who the fuck are these people man and i was thinking to myself what what crime is too much for you to handle like if you were if you were like these people and you were talking to someone in prison, and they were like and you were like oh what are you in for, what would they have to say if you to be like nah I'm out. <laughs> I think a serious assault like if they seriously assaulted someone like to the point of coma. I think that would be the low end. Anything to do with any kind of rape. <laughs> 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 yeah, but for it to be rape, Jamie, you would have to say no. So you can't say that because it wouldn't be rape for you. It would be because I feel as though they'll be forceful. They, they'll make, they'll make me feel uncomfortable, Dan. <laughs> it's never it's never a yes until you actually get to the act. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> There's a whole movement about that in there. What me too? It has to be like a yes, 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 all the way up until. Permission has to be asked at all points. Or something. Or some, I don't know. No, I don't know. It's something they started bringing out on campuses and uh, universities in America because of drunk girls. I, um, um, what about you? 
I bet yours is like fucking mass murder or something. <laughs> Actually, no, the murder wouldn't bother me. Theft would be a no for me. Are you joking? No, because I kind of like the little bit of danger, don't you? Well, so you you wouldn't mind being like during during the act of sex, I actually might slice your throat and bathe in your blood. Mm, no, not really. You'd be like a, a fucking would... halal pig on top of her. <laughs> this woman's going to lift me up by my ankles. And... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, theft is the biggest thing for me. I think myself, because I'm quite a paranoid person. Yeah. So murder, I'd be there, wouldn't I? If, she, if she's going to do it while I'm in my sleep, then I'm asleep. I don't really give a fuck. A lot of the time it, when it's theft as well, there's fucking crackheads, man. Yeah, exactly, yeah. I think my, there was an episode of that where he waits to see her. They're supposed to get married. He's never had a phone call with her or nothing, and he's the weirdest looking bloke. She gets out, and then it's like the, the day or the second day, he wakes up, and she's gone and like taking his money and like <laughs> something like that. I think myself, well, did you, know, you expect that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You've seen the rap sheet. It's the easiest dating profile because you can see their problems. Yeah, you know I mean, but yeah, I think theft. I think I couldn't imagine trust it because it's trust, right? Yeah, I suppose. You, you want to leave that person in your house. You you've got to trust them not to. You also got to trust as well, them. though, Dan. That you're not going to wake up and you're bound to the bed getting raped. Yeah, but like I said, I always say yes, it's not rape. <laughs> <laughs> all, I, all I can imagine is like in Shameless when Frank Gallagher's wife comes out with like a 12-inch strap on. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, but he enjoyed that in the end, didn't he? Well, he started to in the end, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but could you imagine like you wake up, you're strapped to the bed and then she's nicking all your shit? I was like, yeah, I said yes to the, the sex love, not for you fucking shafting me. And she's walking out with all your fucking TV and stuff. Or she finds like an old flame. That's what I always think would happen. Like an old flame. Oh, like an ex, like gangster boyfriend. And yeah. Stuff. And he turns up at the house and then they're using you as collateral in some kind of fucking case. And your mum's trying to find oh, like 30 grand. pimp and stuff. <laughs> yeah, fuck that. Yeah, that's Your mum's one, scrambling then, yeah. for 30 grand to try <laughs> <laughs> I think my mum would be like he got himself into it he got himself into the situation I'm not going to put myself into debt because he, he was silly with his willy yeah oh yeah yeah my mum wouldn't fucking I don't know anyone that's got 30 grand just off hand just to be like yeah right then <laughs> even my, my car is only worth something like four on my previous <laughs> on my previous podcast we are we brought my mum on and I said to her if one of us was to kill someone, would you support us? Yeah. My mum would. And she was like, no, as soon as you've done anything like that, I don't know you anymore. <laughs> I was like, thank you, mum. I was like, even if it was like, like self-defence or they'd done something to like my missus or something like that. She was like, no. I, I was like, would you grass us up and tell the police where we are? She was like, yeah. I was like, mum. You're supposed to be my fucking birth... Like, you're supposed to have birthed me. Do you know what I mean? My mum would absolutely help me. She would? Yeah, she would fucking dig the hole. <laughs> She's sick like that. I think my dad would. <laughs> She'd probably fucking write me a card. Like, well done. <laughs> <laughs> she, that's what she probably always wanted. She either wanted a gay son or a murderer. <laughs> oh, fucking hell. That's, that's a category, isn't it? <laughs> No, I think my dad. I think my dad would. I think my dad, he wouldn't be happy, but I think he would have my back. I think he would be like, it's, I would lie to him as well. I'd tell him that it was self defence, even though I've shot him nine times or something. <laughs> <laughs> he just kept getting up. He had I was, a knife. I was like, I'm pretty sure he was a fucking zombie dad. Like, if we could just, I was like, stop talking about it. Just put him in the hole. <laughs> Nah. Uh, I'm not sure about know. this. I'm think... not sure about this gear. That's I don't I think my dad would. Jeff probably would. But only because my mum would fucking tell him to. Grab the legs, Jeff. Grab the legs. <laughs> I don't think my dad would even fucking. He'd be like, it's your fucking problem, mate. I can imagine your mum and Jeff being like. like the, do you know the in the horror film? Know. In the horror film where 
like the parents are like helping and like you're the, like the big fucking Texas Chainsaw Massacre fucking guy just walk around and they're like trying to help you out of the car <laughs> it has to be like there's a face like they're all sitting around the dinner table aren't they <laughs> and I'm in the basement Chop, <laughs> chopping up some 17 year old girl <laughs> Jesus yeah. Christ the thing is there is families like that in this world and that's what's fucking scary man yeah oh yeah yeah for sure, man. For sure. But yeah, that show just made me laugh. I just think to myself, how fucking... There was one guy that... She ain't fucking in love with him, but he's paying for like her lawyers and sending her money for stuff. It, it, I think he, he spent something like 90 grand. Mm. And he's she's been in for 10 years and he's been talking to her for five or something. To this it's day, I still don't understand. Like You see it a lot on Catfish. It's happened to a relation of mine. Like, they're talking to these people online or talking to them pen pal into prison or whatever. And they're sending them fucking money after money after money. Never met this person. Never had a real, like, connection. Phys- I feel as though you need a physical connection. Oh, yeah, yeah. If you've never had that, then you're doing right. it basically just trusting them that they have the right intentions. Yeah. And with my relation, I won't say who it was because it would be too obvious. But with my relation, it will be, I think that he was about two years talking to this woman. She was way out of his league in the pictures. She, she obviously was an obvious catfish. This was before catfish days. And um, I think he'd give her like thousands in the end. And then it turned out to be like some bloke called Terry or something. <laughs> and she weren't even from America. Like she pretended to be from America. He was, some, he was from like fucking Yorkshire. Fucking hell. As soon as it's money involved, it's like, nah, I'm out. Fuck that. It's not happening. Not getting no money. It's That's like, how oh, you know it's a thing. I can't like, make they, rent they this money. week. Fuck off. Yeah. Absolutely. I can't remember if I said in this before, like, that whole thing about you said about there has to be interaction and stuff like that. I think that's what the problem, I can't remember if I said before about the dating. Yeah, you said that when you met up in person, sometimes it's not there. Yeah, you get this image in your head because you're talking for so long. Mm. You get this image, and then when then when you meet him, it's never the same. And that's exactly what's going on here. You're stuck right into this person, and you think, oh, this person's waiting for me. Oh, they're so lovely, blah, blah, blah. And yeah. you get out, and you're like, oh, is, oh what? Is that you? And at that point, they're the only connection to the outside world as well. Yeah, exactly. And then they get out, and they're like, Oh, look at all these different people that want to talk to me now that I'm not in fucking prison. Yeah. Oh, fuck you. Yeah, off you go. Yeah, yeah. You were the best of the worst batch. Exactly, yeah. Oh, you start buying me, but who gives a fuck now? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely fucking mental. People do it, though. People... There's a guy I know who's been in prison nine years this year. I think he's out next year. He's been in prison since we were fucking teenagers, nearly. Mm-hmm. And his girlfriend that was with him then is still with him all these years later. And I, I say, and really what he got put away for wasn't worth the sentence, but he got penalised. But we won't go into that. That's political. But um, I said to Charlotte, <laughs> would you wait for me if I was in for a four, for, for a four year stretch? Yeah. <laughs> I can imagine her what she said to you. <laughs> and she was like, Well, I've always told you in my first marriage. I was like, You bitch. <laughs> <laughs> you fucking bitch. <laughs> she was like, It's the easy way out. <laughs> I couldn't imagine it. Especially, I think, because of the ADHD thing, I, I would just be like, It'd be like a week. The thing is, as well, it. they deliberately place you. Like, the, the guy that I'm talking about has been placed up, like, in Sheffield or something. Mm. like deliberately place you really far away because so obviously you can't mix with too many people that are from your area oh really yeah when you're on a, like a high level charge so like people from Manchester and stuff will be down here and stuff like etc so the people that you are like related to and your girlfriends and your boyfriends they've got to travel fucking miles mm-hmm to go and see you and it's purely down to obviously if you do good behaviour and stuff they'll move you closer but the guy I know has not been good in prison 
<laughs> can't get punk, man. You can't get punk. <laughs> right, guys, coming to the end of the show. You've been listening to us long enough. Um, again, uh, right in this week, if you have any like contributions to the show, questions, or maybe just content ideas, it's two men no hope at gmail dot com. And as we said, we have a new segment. So um, I'm gonna pass it over. Oh, before I pass it over to you, Dan, I've just started a TikTok up. <laughs> oh God, yeah. That's Jay. Anything any, do with TikTok is Jamie's ideal now. Yeah, I'm, um, <laughs> I'm obsessed with TikTok. So I thought any clips that we make from our recordings for the show, we're going to put onto TikTok and see whether we get any traction. Well, it's another way to advertise, isn't it? So. Yeah, if you could add us up on there, again, two men, no hope. It's it's on all my links, right? It should be on all my links. I don't yeah, know whether I've one. added it. It's alright, I'll double check. Um, I saw it's on the the profile though. The all my links thing is on the profile. Yeah, I put that straight on the profile so people can find us. That's fun. Even if we get one person out of it, it's one person. So we had five hundred people on our uh, views on our first video. Which oh, the Amber Heard. Yeah, the Amber Heard video. <laughs> which ain't bad, really, when you think about it, considering that's been up like six hours. Yeah, that's all right. I don't your know what face is are. fucking brilliant, though. Your your face made that clip. <laughs> 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 <He's> like, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I'll pass it over to you now, Dan, for the, the final segment, the new segment. Right, so we thought it was a good idea to... Obviously, we want to make a little community going, as we are doing with people emailing in. And uh, music is a massive thing for me and Jamie. And uh, we always like finding new bands to listen to. And saying about TikTok, I get a lot of my new music from TikTok now. Mm. Um, so last week, Jamie put a Facebook message out for any small sort of unlabeled bands if they wanted to be in the podcast. And we actually got a really good response from it. And um, we're set for fucking weeks now. <laughs> <laughs> so it's really hard to... Um... We got a much bigger response than expected, didn't we? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. And there was a lot of really good people on there. So if you're listening to the episode and obviously this isn't your song or anything like that, please don't be disheartened or anything. We, well, At the minute, we're only obviously doing one song a, a week. Mm. So it's really hard to choose from everyone because there was some really good stuff. Um, but we have got everyone saved and we will try and get to you and let you know when you when if you get into an episode um but this week we went with a a a blues musician because i love fucking heart hum- as soon as you, i heard the harmonica man that was it <laughs> a harmonica or a banjo and i'm fucking sold so the guy is called um the blues messenger and his new album is of the same name which is on uh, Spotify, and I've been listening to it actually in the car. It's actually a, r- a really good album. Um, there's only about f- four songs, four or five songs out of the nine that are full length. I think he's got a lot of sort of like um, intro to the next sort of song sort of things. Yeah, he done some covers as well, didn't he? Is that the guy yeah, yeah, um, Sweet Home Chicago is that one? Yeah. Um. But he sent us a review that someone had written up for him already. And it says, uh, Blues Messenger is a road trip from Mississippi to Chicago with a sprinkle of New Orleans and a pit pit stop in the Appalachian Mountains. Imagine a dinner party with Sun House, Dr. John and Muddy Waters and a guest appearance by Johnny Cash. Not for the faint of heart, but undeniably good for the soul. And uh, I think that's pretty good. I think when you... When you hear it, you're going to agree. Yeah, definitely. So, this is it for this episode, and we're gonna we're gonna play it out. His new song is called "Wayfaring Stranger," and we're gonna play for you now. And uh, we'll catch you on the next episode. <laughs> I'm just a poor wayfaring stranger Traveling through this land of war 
There ain't no beauty Toil on danger In this bright light To which I roll I'm going there To meet my father I'm going there No more to roll I'm just rolling over Jordan I'm just going and over I know the cloud they gather around me I know my way is dark and see but beauteous view they get around me and this way my vigils keep I'm going there to meet my father I'm going there no more to roll I'm just going and over Over